Hi, Dr. Lyons here, creator of Navigating Autism and Eat to Heal Autism. And today's Ask Dr. Lyons question is, what is the association between asthma and autism? Let's get to the science. All right, we're in PowerPoint and I'll walk you through the science. Asthma. In our body, lungs are where oxygen and carbon dioxide exchange occurs. Asthma is a chronic slash reversible. There's a lot of debate as to whether asthma is a chronic disease or a reversible disease. So I put both. It's not the focus of this week's video, so just know that in the literature it is described as both. So asthma is a chronic, reversible, episodic, obstructive airway disease caused by hyperactivity of the bronchial tree to a variety of stimuli, thus allowing less air into and out of the lungs. Symptoms are coughing, wheezing, shortness of breath, and or chest tightness. The majority of children who develop asthma do so before the age of five. A little bit more about asthma. Asthma is the leading cause of school absences in children younger than 17. Boys are twice as affected as girls until adolescence. Asthma triggers are exercise, smoke, cold air, pollen, insects, chemicals, pollution, pets, and stress. Studies have suggested that several comorbidities might be associated with autism, including immune-mediated disorders such as asthma, allergy, and skin disorders such as atopic dermatitis and eczema. Interesting, huh? The immune system really gets involved. Asthma and the immune system. Many asthma symptoms are due to an apparent expansion of Th2 lymphocytes that secrete cytokines. Okay, let me explain cytokines. Cytokines are small secreted proteins released by cells that have a specific effect on the interactions and communications between cells. So cytokines basically are information from one cell telling another cell what to do or what's going on. Asthma is heterogeneous in clinical presentation, progress, and response to therapy. So as you saw, there's many different triggers for asthma. So asthma is quite heterogeneous in clinical presentation, progress, and response to therapy, just like autism. Speaking of autism, let's talk about autism and the immune system. Immune abnormalities were first described in individuals with autism in 1977. That's pretty shocking. 1977. That's 40 years ago. Ay ay ay. It is well documented that individuals with autism have altered immune profiles that are correlated with deficits in behavioral profiles. So that goes even a step further. Research has identified many immune functions that are atypical in autism, but, not surprisingly, the findings are often as heterogeneous as the behavioral phenotypes which make up autism. So that pretty much says just because one study finds a particular immune function to be, let's say, hyperactive, another research study might find that same immune function to be normal and another study could be could find it less occurring. So again, that's really what's been some of the difficulties with studying autism, is that the research done on autism is not always conclusive. There's really great threads of truth, of scientific truth. You have to be willing to read a lot of research to really understand the trends in autism. Asthma and autism. I'm sure that's why many of you clicked play. You want to learn about asthma and autism. Asthma affects about 9.5% of children in the U.S. The National Health Interview Survey revealed that 21.6% of children with autism were reported to have asthma. That's quite profound. So one immune factor that has been suggested to have contributed to immune-mediated disorders, including asthma, allergies, and autoimmunity, is the inflammatory T-cell cytokine interleukin-17. Interleukin-17, abbreviated IL-17, 
It is a cytokine that elicits protection against extracellular bacterial and fungal infections and is important in inflammation. However, when produced in excess, interleukin-17 contributes to chronic inflammation associated with many inflammatory and autoimmune disorders. That's pretty profound, that interleukin-17 is a cytokine that elicits protection against extracellular bacterial and fungal infections. And there's so much research coming out about the different microbiota of those with autism compared to those without. So interleukin-17, quite important. Cytokines are small secreted proteins released by cells that have a specific effect on the interactions and communications between cells. Recent research reported that interleukin-17 was increased in children with autism who also had asthma compared to controls with asthma. That's a good study. Now, the lung microbiota, I know when everyone says the word microbiota, you automatically think the gut, but that's not the only place where bacteria thrive as well as are needed. Research is ongoing to understand the importance of microbes in the lower airways, basically our lungs. Many more microbes have been detected than previously thought to inhibit the lungs. The lungs were initially thought to be sterile, just like the stomach was initially thought to be sterile. Turns out neither is true. Lung microbiota research is constrained by the fact that most sampling techniques are quite invasive and that limits sampling and research. Obviously our lungs are quite protected and it's not very easy to just take a little sample. So it is a little bit invasive. In healthy people, bacteria enters the lung, your lower airways, mainly through inhalation and it's cleared by a combination of mucus and the innate immune system. Failure to remove bacteria rapidly may allow colonization and an infection to occur. Let's look at asthma and the lung microbiota. Results published in 2010 from 24 adults and 19 children show that the bronchial tree contains a characteristic microbiota. Their analysis suggests that the microbiota is disturbed in asthmatic airways. The relative abundance of particular families of bacteria was also correlated to bronchial hyperresponsiveness. Proteobacteria were found to be at higher levels in children with asthma. The lung microbiota is extremely important to overall health. All right, now to tie it all together, gut microbiota and asthma, right? We're talking about two different kinds of things here. We have microbiota in the gut and we have microbiota of our lung, right? They're not connected, right? <laughs> well, just stay with me for this last slide. The increase in asthma rates has been linked epidemiologically to the rapid disappearance of H. pylori. And H. pylori is considered a bacterial pathogen that persistently colonizes the human stomach. I'm sure many of you have heard about the hygiene hypothesis. That pretty much says that early life microbial exposure is critical for our proper immune system maturation and function. Let's somehow relate the gut microbiota and our lungs. Mechanistic studies performed in mouse models of allergic asthma showed that early life colonization with H. pylori in the stomach prevents allergic asthma through recruitment of pulmonary T regulatory cells and impaired dendritic cell maturation. Amazing, right? Absolutely amazing how a considered bacterial pathogen that persistently colonizes the human stomach can actually confer protection against allergic asthma. That's in our lungs. The human body is absolutely amazing. And this is how special diets are that powerful. Gut health is extremely important to overall health, especially in those with autism. If you wanna learn more about special diets, hop on over to my website, awetism.net, and you'll find a lot of great information. And here's some references in case you wanna do more research.